Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Spore Herbivore. This is Solanus Dracone, and we're picking up immediately from where we left off with the end of the tribal stage, going into the civilization stage. And I could spend more time sitting around here gathering parts and just enjoying the ambiance, but I noticed that my last video went 45 minutes, and so I'm not going to take any more time here. So I'm advancing to the civilization stage. And as you can see, I've remained friendly. Now this results in me becoming a nation that is going to be religious. And there's very little difference functionally between the religious nation and the uh, aggressive nation, or the war military nation, uh, in that you're sending your bunches of vehicles over to capture other nations either by playing them music or by blasting them to bits. Uh, takes less time on the religious portion, but we'll see that shortly. We want bigger houses. So it's going to ask me now to design a new house. Your tribe now dominates this continent, ready to advance from simple village life to civilized city living ahead of the rest. Moving my microphone closer. So I am being asked to design a building. I actually took the liberty of designing the buildings off screen uh, before the recording of the last episode. So I'm just going to select them from the list. You select it, you hit edit, and then you click the checkbox. The shape of the building, the size of the building, none of it matters. It's all cosmetic. We want religion! Yes, we do want religion. We shall have religion then. <laughs> we want religious vehicles. Yes, we agree. Give us religious vehicles. We shall have religious vehicles then. <laughs> we want pie. What? Well, I. I, I you can't have a civilization with that pie. They're kind of mean to that guy. You should have. You gotta have pie. That's ridiculous. You are about to enter civilization. So after building your city hall, they will ask you to build your land vehicle. Again, I made all of this off screen so I'm just gonna select my rolling messenger it's got a pretty good balance of everything here I'd say <clears throat> I don't want to spend any time really on, on discussing the uh, attributes of the vehicles they have speed they have health and then they have the potency power of religious economic or military and that's it <clears throat> You can devote a certain percentage of your vehicle to it. Flipping into the building, great. I notice I forgot to take their silly mask things off. <clears throat> Look at my wonderful city. The age of technology and transportation has arrived. Your city is the first to appear on the planet, but your species no longer speaks with a single voice. Soon other cities will arise, built by factions of your own species. You must unify to advance. Now somewhere between being peaceful to the other critters and starting my own civilization, all the other sentient races vanished, or are just staying completely and totally in the Stone Age. So only my species are going to form cities now. We have become the dominant race on the planet. And so here we start off, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we got going on, these little spikes here on the map are the uh, spice geysers and uh, they are what let you gather your currency you'll start off typically towards the middle of the map and your first other three cities will appear uh, upon this continent and only after that do you gain the ability to uh, add the air vehicles so first thing I want to do is I notice I have one two three four five spice geysers on this continent here uh, this one doesn't count, it's out to sea. No, it's it's not out to sea. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make as many other vehicles as I can. 
this, which is just three more. I'm going to send one each to go and capture the Spice Geysers, because this is going to be highly important to uh, my strategy. Uh, once you've captured significant Spice Geysers, then you're going to have everybody else competing to grab. <coughs> I don't really see the point of this other guy. I didn't need all that many. So this guy is not long, no longer doing anything. I'm going to send him over here to grab this one. And this one is now idle, so I'm going to send him here. And there's an epic. And it says it's an epic turtle. Doesn't look like a turtle to me. Now the uh, only downside really with the religious here is that you don't have much of a defense against these guys or you don't have much of a way to kill. This guy is going to get stomped right away. Oh, he survived. These guys will attack you, it does not matter one little bit whether you're in the sky, on the, on the sea or otherwise they are going to attack you. So, alright, finally the first other nations have begun to appear. I have started to gain more uh, spore bucks, more spice. <coughs> and you can see what kind of nations they are just by hovering over their houses. This is an economic nation you can see from the little money bag. This is a, another religious nation from that eyepiece, and this is a military nation from those crossed swords. Notice that uh, none of them really seem bothered by me. They seem happy. They seem pretty content. Um, these guys down here don't really know what to do with me, but you, your first three cities will appear on the same continent as you. And once you've conquered three cities, uh, in this case by religious means you do it by sending your people over just to go ahead and play their music at them, then uh, you will get the ability to unlock the air vehicle. So I'm going to just make as many of these as I can. I'm going to go ahead and in my city planner now and real quick just take a brief moment to re-equip my citizens with new outfits because these tribal duds are so last millennium. I'm going to put on the whiz-bang hat because I think that's uh, probably the best thing to put for a peaceful, wise kind of a race. Uh, the masks, I don't have any I want to use right now. Mm. Nothing in this area either. It's all pretty blah. I might use some of that. See, I was hoping for the uh, little ponytail thing here, but I, I guess I don't get that till the space stage. Let's see, rank hatchings. It's all decoration. I'm not going to worry about it. No, no point to the decoration. Just a hat. That's all. I'm gonna go into the vehicle here, and I, I can't, <laughs> I can't design any more vehicles until I get to a spot that's up against the sea. You don't get boats unless you're in a, a seaside city. Although I have gone ahead and made buildings as well, so uh, you can create a new one just by clicking on the icon here, or click on your Sporpedia icon. And as you can see, I've made houses already, so I just click on it and select it. Peaceful abode. Celebration Hall. <coughs> Yay. And finally, the Honest Workhouse. And uh, you're, you've, you've got a setup where the way that you arrange your city matters greatly. Um, because you're going to have two meters to watch out for. There's the defense meter which uh, tells you how, how invulnerable against attack your city is, or rather, uh, by lack of icons, how vulnerable your city is. And you, get, you make it more secure by adding uh, turrets, which they, they increase your defenses. They will shoot at uh, monsters that come near you, uh, or even shoot at other angry nations. The layout matters, uh, and we'll go into that in a bit, but there's also the happiness meter that you have to watch out for. If the happiness is not uh, of sufficient amount, you may have cities rebelling. Uh, that, I've never seen that be a problem, but then again, I always try to at least have one happiness. And then there's the money amount. We're not bringing in any extra income because we don't have any buildings to do that with. You affect your happiness ratings by adding in things like entertainment, and you can see the little glowing spots where this building could go. And you also can add uh, productivity by adding factories, and again, all the little glowy spots. 
Now you notice there's actually quite a few spots here, just little blank spots where those glowies are appearing, and that means that these are places you could potentially put something. Um, you can't put into some of the further flying out ones because uh, you haven't unlocked it, you have to have a building that uh, connects to these and is within range. So you'll see, for instance, I put down an entertainment building, then that's going to, uh, well, first off, it's going to take all my money up, but it has boosted the happiness of the town, which doesn't really functionally do anything but keep them from rebelling. Uh, so I'm going to uh, take that building back out. It is Now is not the time to begin city building. <coughs> And, um, again, keeping true to the blitz method. Uh, now I have enough for a house. I want to at least put one house in because that's going to give me the ability to add more of my vehicles. And I just, I want as many vehicles as possible because I'm going to be using the blitz method. I am going to be just sending everybody out. Sending everybody out all at once to conquer a nation. So the closest one is Valdorf, and that is a military city. Uh, you want to save, I mean, I like to make all of my cities be the same. And it is known, it is said, that a city that has a smaller happiness rating, that has an anger rating, as you see with the little red face there, uh, they're going to be easier to take over as a religious city because I guess you're bringing them a message of, of better times. Uh, you can keep the city military or religious or economic after you, after you conquer it. Look at that, I'm, I'm making a, an image of myself professing. Now you're just basically waiting here for this bar, this bar, that keeps flicking around to go all the way to the end. And that doesn't take long at all. If you start early before they've had a chance to fortify the city, then it doesn't take hardly any time at all. So as you come in, the red city is bearing their banner, and they have changed it to the color of ours. So they are now a part of our nation. They belong to us. You've converted this military city by religious means. If you keep the specialty, you can build military vehicles to conquer other cities. Choose the city's specialty. I'm just going to stick with the religious all the way through. I want all the buildings to be the same. I don't want to have to design vehicles all over again, because you do have to design vehicles over again, keeping it religious. And this, of course, gives a good hopping off point for first making new vehicles, and then sending everybody at once to the next town, which is a religious town. Uh, they got angry at me, apparently, because of my warlike ways. You can kind of see... well, you can't see it right now, uh, you don't have the relationship meter in this one, I guess. Uh, but you can see that uh, they, they got angry at me because they saw me being warlike and taking over. <clears throat> we are under attack somehow. Who's attacking us? For our cities to grow, our economies must grow. We would like to establish a trade route. Uh, sure, I accept the offer. So a religious, not religious, an economic nation has sent a uh, vehicle over to make a trade route. I'll accept it because that's just going to bring me more. Uh, that's going to bring me more money. Uh, we sent all of our guys over to try and get this city, but the city obviously doesn't want to be got. So they've got this, this ship attacking me. It's not gonna. It's not gonna have any effect. You will lose vehicles. The the city will fight back. But uh, as you can see, this is this is a losing battle. Now, some of my vehicles are attacking buildings, and that's you know that's disabling them. I guess I don't really know what it does, but um, I think it's a waste of time. But hey, that's how the game plays out. And I'm about to capture this city, so I'm not too worried about these guys attacking me. <clears throat> and another another city has joined my growing nation of fanatics you've converted this religious city to your religion it will remain a religious city fantastic now I've got a big enough army I think to go and conquer this next city uh, the economic cities do not have any self-defense. So I'm just going to send them right along. And they just took one of my geysers. They just straight up ganked one of my spice geysers. That is not cool. That is not cool, guys. 
Yeah, I accept your offer, but I am about to come and, and attack you. Now, that's, that's going to be my excuse for starting this war. You guys took my geyser. They, they don't have any way, honestly, to fight back. Just gonna let them go all the way. Of course, you've got, uh, you see down here, once the third city has been captured, fourth city for you to own completely, then you get the airspace, the air force ability. Alright, I got them. And that's uh, that's why I do it this quickly, this early, is because that just means that I am able to uh, get them before they've had a chance to develop as nations. You've converted this economic city by religious means. Economic cities can establish trade routes to manage your relationships and eventually buy other cities. Choose the city's specialty. Herbivore for life. Oh, but now we're going to see how we can design. We have discovered the power of flight. Even though we have wings. People are never happy. Success! Even the mighty wind now obeys our technology. The arrow funnel and vortex tube will allow you to build vehicles that float and spiral miles above the surface of our planet. Great! And now I'm going to change them to a religious city. Herbivore for life. And now everybody's at war with me. Excellent. Okay, now at this point I like to take stock and see who's a religious city. Uh, because when you go through and, and blitz all the other cities and conquer them, then the last one, the last holdout is going to be... Uh, they're going to surrender to you. Automatically they will surrender to you. So, uh, looks like Dunny, whatever, is a religious city, so I will save them for last. And because I am going to now, uh, well, now I am at war. Who's who's attacking me? These guys. All right. Well, let me go ahead and just drop some turrets into the situation. Turrets are the best defense. I'm gonna put put them to uh, as close to the shore as possible. Okay, looks like I've got as many down. Yep, no more spaces for turrets, so I can only get this city up to four defense. Alright, so uh, now is the time when I should be uh, putting my vehicles in. So I've already made a ship, the floating messenger, and I've already made the religious air, the flying messenger because I am absolutely original. Not much speed, but plenty of uh, health and religious power. <clears throat> this made things a lot easier on me. And since I would like to just completely fill everybody up, I'm going to select everybody, hit my delete button, and disband all the vehicles so I can just pump out as, as many air vehicles as possible. Now the air vehicles, I don't think that the sea vehicles can do anything about them. So I'm just going to send them in to uh, sort this guy out. We're going we're gonna to get attacked a lot. Let's just get that out of the way. Everybody hates me now. And the military nations are the ones that are really going to hurt. So I might want to get those taken care of faster. Oh my, they are attacking me. Wow. Better add another. I'm going to bankrupt myself on this war. <clears throat> but as long as I act quickly now I've got the social bar what do you guys want? the planet trembles before the mighty armada you will not survive prepare for war and I kind of talked over him with his language um, which you, you get sort of a, a spore language there's like three different dialects there's the angry military guy and then there's the uh weird sounding religious guy and then there's the uh, clucky hen sounding economic lady I'm sorry did you say something meaning I am completely ignoring anything you're saying because I don't consider you a threat I'm gonna get these guys to stop being dicks by killing them 
And once that's been sorted out, which mil military vehicles are extremely strong, they have tons of health, so you don't want to get into too many fights with them if you can help it. And that's, that's sorted out there. They damaged my turret just a little bit. Very useless turret, I think. I'm just going to wait for it to get above 6,000 here. <clears throat> Alright, so I can pop out two more religious heirs. I'm going to have them come in close to the city just to heal a bit. Because they, they took a bit of a beating. Healing goes very slowly. <clears throat> bah, who has time for rest? Now I'm going to try and take this city over. Uh, it is to be noted that the air vehicles are not going to have as much power, religious, military, or otherwise, as the sea vehicles. Uh, but I can't be bothered to put out a bunch of ships. Red Nation has captured another nation, so they're gonna be they're gonna be a bit of a thorn in my side. Same to you, bro. <laughs> I love their little language, it's funny. Skrita, baby. Let's see if I have a chance of, of capturing them. It's, it's interesting that I seem to have disabled quite a few of their buildings already. I guess the buildings get disabled just by attacking them. I'm going to see if, that, if I even have a chance, because I'm being attacked right back. And I seem to be disabling their turret to some extent. The city's not happy. As in general, not, not just because I'm attacking them, they're just not happy people. But these guys are, are not going to convert very quickly. Red Nation's going to be my sworn enemy here, I think. And if it gets really bad, I may have to uh, try to bribe them. Uh, this is going pretty slow. I've got enough to add a few more air vehicles to it, so I'm going to do that. Hakuchaku. And let me send them to join the fray. I'm just going to make a big, gigantic armada. And, and have them go, and, and you know, I do believe, no, they left the religious city alone. I was going to say, if they got my religious city, I'm in, I'm in a pickle, because the problem is, when you, if you capture a city, uh, or if you finish the civilization stage, and the last one to surrender is not of your type, then they will forever not be of your type, and I just, I don't want to have to design buildings for every different type. My city is under attack. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me finish up business here, and then I will sort that out. Alright, now that I've got these extras, uh, I should get this city, although with some losses, uh, unfortunately. Yes. They were a tough city. You've converted this military city. Yeah, yeah, we know the drill. Religious. Okay, now it's time to defend myself because the uh, Red Nation still exists. They, they, they captured another city, so they still exist. I'm gonna send these guys over to take this guy out. God, these turrets, they're being completely useless and they're attacking the factories. Not that I care about these factories much, mind you. I am going to be, uh... <laughs> I'm going to be sending people over to, uh, well not people, I'm going to be completely redoing the cities at the end of the civilization stage, because that's going to matter on into the space stage. But you, you want them to be pumping out as much as possible. Because the spice that you gather is, is definitely going to matter heavily. Now I don't trust them not to try and take over the, uh, cities that I've captured, so I'm going to pump out more religious air, and I'm going to send these guys over to attack the last of the Red Nation. Because the Red Nation are just very aggressive, and unfortunately uh, I do not want to have to deal with them. They're trying to attack us, but uh, I think we're too fast for them. 
Yeah, way too fast. Now this is a very happy city, for some reason. Probably because they've got, you know, some entertainment buildings strewn about. So they're theoretically going to be more difficult to take. But I'm going to just do my best to hang in there. Oh no, they're, they're now very unhappy because I have just turned off their entertainment buildings. So this might not be all that bad. Since this uh, city right here, Valdef, is uh, much closer, I'm going to use them for spawning more ships and just send them in to join the battle. Wow, I'm really getting hammered here. This is bad. This is very bad, actually. They, uh, I did not expect them to have this level of uh, ferocity. Let's see, is this Spice Guys or mine? Nope, it's empty. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna make one more vehicle so I can send him to go and get that geyser. You do not, unfortunately, inherit the geysers of other nations. Uh, I'm at least going to put these guys to some work. Have them attack that ship. Send this uh, land guy away. <clears throat> and I'm just going to wait a little bit until I have a few more buildings. Or a, few, a, a lot more spice, because these, these guys are going to be tough. I want to have some ships ready. And unfortunately, the more time it takes for me to... Uh, build things up, then the more that they're going to consolidate their power, and so this is going to become a slog. They're attacking my house. God, they're attacking that one, too. Make some more. Those military nations are tough. It looks like the blue ones are trying to take me over. The blue ones are warlike, but they've got a lot of buildings to plow through. And, and when you're a military nation, or when there is a military nation, they're going to try and destroy your buildings first. So you got, I got some time here before I have to react. Make one more. Gonna get my guys to float over it so they can heal up some, and so I can get a few more spore bucks together. It's really a nasty situation, this whole thing. I'm going to try and take over the military nations first. Looks like the blue nation went and stomped out uh, the, the other ones there. Everybody's a military nation. This game is conspiring to be more difficult for me. Alright, everybody's healing up. Takes a while. Might be better off with ships, honestly. And yeah, occasionally a city will start celebrating. We got this problem to deal with now. So, gotta go off to defend. And usually it's a quick one, but apparently this the game decided that it was gonna be mean. Now it looks like actually most of the cities here are pretty coastal. So I could probably send in yeah, this is a they got a harbor. You see, this one does not have a harbor, so I'll probably have to go over land or over sea. This one has a harbor. So I think I'll just uh, I'll try to dump all of my air. They're they're fairly weak the air. Uh, they're just more uh, they're more quick. Uh, guys, where are you? Oh, you're over here handling business. Okay, so let me let me try and uh, let me ditch these guys. And that gives me a refund. It's not a full refund, unfortunately. I lose money. But now I have a ton of ships. And that's going to make things uh, considerably easier. Yellow Nation has been obliterated. That's bad. Alright, I'm going to try and attack these guys by sea. And the ships are more robust. They, they have more HP, and I think I'm going to be able to uh, more easily capture this nation because of it. But I, I, I want to get red out of the way and done with because they're just they're a nasty lot. 
Let's look at this city. Are they on the ocean? Yes, they are. If they're on the ocean, then I have a better chance. <coughs> so I've got this armada going forth here. Baldef is not a sea city, so they cannot make. Oh, with that, all right. I'm I'm just gonna ignore that for now, because I I'm, I'm I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to uh, to take the city over. There's another epic over here. Can't do anything about it. If I were a military nation, I could send a bunch of uh, guys to go kill them, but I'm not a military nation. I'm a religious nation. So yeah, you see the, the ships are just much hardier and have better attack power, or religious power as it were, so uh, I'm going to have this. <clears throat> and again, I'm leaving this, uh, this pink city over here alone, so I think my next uh, campaign is going to be purely by land. Once I've captured this city, I'm going to go down for this blue one here, and then I'll have a good launching point for uh, a good land attack. Right, that went pretty well. Went pretty well indeed. Your ships are much more, uh, again, they're, they're much stronger than your air. Alright, second verse, same as the first. I'm gonna dismiss my ships. No, I'm not gonna dismiss my ships. That's right. I need, I need to get uh, one of the one of the cities on this continent. And then I'm gonna just send out a bunch of land vehicles to do my dirty work. This one I'm gonna send over here to uh, get this spice geyser because he's he's near death. All right. Every little bit that I can bring in helps. So this first episode, I'm probably going to spend two episodes in the uh, Civilization stage. Uh, the first one is just the takeover of nations. And I could do that with this uh, fanatical uprising once I've got enough, uh, enough spore bucks. But I'm not going to do it because I want to have these cities converted all to religious. That's why I'm leaving this one alone, because that's a religious city. It'll be the last holdout. And the last holdout always surrenders. This is done. <clears throat> Very weird architecture and structures you guys have here. Boom. We know the drill. Religious. Alright, so that's all the uh, sea cities that I mean to get. Seaside cities, and I'm just going to crank out a bunch of my religious land vehicles. And I'm going to blitz the rest. Now is the, now is the time for blitzing. I have the money for it, I have the power for it, and I'm just going to try and get this stage over with, get this episode over with, so that we don't have to deal. <laughs> Alright, they, they seem to be uh, falling at a, at a decent rate. I'm not losing guys at least all that fast. I could have taken this one over with, with the ships, I suppose. The idea behind the religious vehicles is that they will immobilize things, as you can see the little swirls around this building, we've disabled it, and if we start to get attacked by a monster, then uh, you know, they're going to make the monster peaceful for a certain amount of time. And uh, hopefully that buys you enough time to put up turrets to destroy the damn thing. Yeah, these guys are definitely resisting. But uh, my my vehicles, my land vehicles, are just so much, you know, so much more uh, HP than the air vehicles that they can last longer against such an attack. Mm. 
<laughs> we swear to you now. Yes. Done. Religious, of course. And I'm gonna send some guys in to sort this out, and gosh golly, it looks like these guys took over that city, too. The Blue Nation is, is much more powerful, and that's probably because I let them go a while. You know, I am not gonna deal with this. I, I am tired of their crap. I'm gonna send out some Z vehicles. Double click that type to select all of that type, and I am gonna have a war on two fronts, is what I'm gonna do. I'm taking this over. And yeah, the world is a globe, so you, it kind of wraps around here. And uh, so I went from this side of the map to this side because, you know, it's just the world is round, guys, deal with it. Yeah, it's full scale war, alright. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna let them get all their anger out, because in the end, it will be of no avail to them. I'm gonna teach them the wisdom of my religion. I seem to be losing land vehicles here. Hmm. I might still make it, but I'm not gonna take a chance. I've got the city right here. Add some more. I'm just burning all sorts of uh, spore bucks here, and but that's it's for a good cause, and I'm gonna get them all refunded at the end. I probably won't devote an entire episode to uh, building all my cities because I, that that can get pretty boring. But I will at least spend some time, maybe a short episode, on explaining how to lay out a city for maximum profitability. And, you know, my way is not the only way to do it, obviously. There's there's going to be other ways to manage it. Uh, but, um, you know, that's the, that's the way I would set up a city, so I'm going to show you guys how that goes. Now, it looks to me like uh, I, took a, I took a city. <clears throat> that's good. This war on two fronts is working out. I want them all to be religious cities. I don't want to have to build multiple houses and vehicles. change them to religious. So I took that one. This one is the next one that's going to fall. But I lost a city. What? Wow, they took a city over. Oh man, this is... These guys are tough. They, they, the game's sticking it to me here. I will give it that. Usually I do not have nearly as hard a time of it. So somebody has stolen one of my cities. This will not stand. They stole it back. Alright, you know what? I'm sending my entire armada against this guy. Every sea vehicle, every land vehicle, every vehicle is now coming to sort out the Blue Nation. They have got to be stopped. <clears throat> I, I cannot let this stand. This city should not take long to fall. There are no buildings, and there uh, there's very little resistance. Yeah, look, look at the rate that they're going. I am not worried about it. This is that's just a final futile effort to uh, to hold on to their religion. <clears throat> Alright, the Blue Nation is now completely overthrown. They gave me a good fight. Bastard stuck it to me hard. No homo. Alright, I want it to be known that, that I, uh, by no means am I an atheist. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't like to attack religion. I don't consider myself a religious person. I consider myself a spiritual person. I'm an agnostic, I suppose, if you have to put a label on it. 
but um, you know, I, I don't agree that religion is a bad thing in and of itself. I think that uh, people choose to do bad things and they choose to use religion as the excuse. But religion is not a cause of all the world's evils. No more than money is, and no more than than love is. So now that I've uh, gotten everybody but the Pink Nation, I expect them to surrender any moment now. But I may have to give them some uh, encouragement. Now, uh, since I can't get to them at all, because they're not up against the ocean, I'm gonna... Oh, there you go. We happily accept your surrender. Well, that was nice of you guys. We can see the writing on the wall. I think it's time to fight no more forever. And so our planet is now fully and completely unified. Hooray. And so that wraps it up for the combat portion of this. I'm going to show another little mini episode of uh, just getting all the remaining Spice Geysers and uh, basically customizing a city to have uh, the highest output possible. And uh, that's hopefully it's going to be a short one. Uh, it might, might be a little bit boring for some, but it has a direct effect on the next stage, which is the space stage. So um, look for that next. Uh, again, thank you for watching. I am Solonis Dracone. This has been Let's Play Spore Herbivore.